Greetings, family. This is Bomani Tamba, and we're live on Revolutionary Camp. I'm here with my good sister, Brianna, and uh, we're here to get into some incredible conversation about our people reconnecting to Africa, nation building, and a lot of different uh, cultural and an incredible things. All right, uh, my sister, Brianna, uh, can you uh, introduce yourself and then um, let people know what you're doing today as far as us uh, interviewing and sharing information? Yeah, of course. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Brianna Malloyd, and I am a journalist based here in New York City, where I am right now. And I'm working on a very long magazine piece about repatriation in Ghana, and I've been finding leaders in the movement like Bomani here who have explained how they're involved in helping people permanently relocate to the continent. So what I'm going to be doing here is asking him questions about his process, his background, what led him to this um, line of work, and just general, general information about that. Uh, excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just to begin, um, I'm really interested in your background and in your past. So can you just tell me a little bit about coming to Brooklyn, New York and what experiences you had in the city? Oh yes, um, I was born in October 77 uh, in Kingston, Jamaica. I lived in Kingston, Jamaica for 11 years. Um, left around when I was in the uh, sixth grade, uh, and that's uh, in December 1988, um, cold winter, uh, our family moved to uh, Brooklyn, New York. Uh, and that was a short experience uh, from sixth grade to 12th grade, uh, roughly about uh, seven years. Uh, the main um, connection there was is this, you felt out of place in a different culture and the weather completely different. I mean, it's completely cold, and you're seeing things that you've never seen before, this incredibly tall buildings, you're seeing bums slash homeless people. You're seeing um, the, the environment of crack. Uh, and not that you know, some of those things don't exist in uh, Jamaica and gangsterism. But uh, you know, at that age and being more to, becoming more of a teen, you start seeing more things. But uh, the glory part of uh, my time there was uh, I was in high school four years at uh, East New York uh, Transit Tech uh, High School, and where I studied electrical and electronics uh, systems. And that was, uh, between, uh, two, that was between 1991 to 1995. Mm -hmm. And after that, I um, worked, uh, you know, worked in New York for a few months, you know, on the preparation to join the you know, US Navy. And mm -hmm. also another time during, during high school, I played soccer and track and field. Got me into, this, you know, into the physical aspect and athletics, which, which was very helpful, you know, just being in the military, because that's a big part of being a military person, you have to be in shape and you know, uh, so on. So, you know, I was looking for a way to get out of <laughs> Brooklyn, New York, because it just- well, I'm wondering even, okay. yeah, I'm wondering because um, just the education system in the city and just, you know, you said being around what you were around, was there any specific experiences where you felt like, okay, wait, this isn't feeling right, this isn't right for me? Um, were you around a lot of people who weren't like you? Yeah. When, when you grow up, you know, when you grow up in the, the quote unquote hood, uh, you know, it's not the, you know, you have the projects a few miles away, but you just have, you just have, you have a neighbor, you have neighborhoods where you live at where it's just, you know, where at nighttime the stalkers coming from, you know, the cracker, the drug dealers, the gangsters, you know, and you know, it, it's, you live in a noisy environment. Like where I'm at right here in jo Jonesboro, Georgia, I mean, like between right now where you can't hear nothing. So seven hours later, it's just like that quiet. That's the way people like myself like it even, and I was just never around that environment. Um, but it was just consistent. You know, New York is known for, uh, as a city that just never sleeps, mm -hmm. and that don't work for me. I need to be in a city area where it sleeps all day and I can focus. Uh, so that and just the elements of this, some of the people that I was around just did not like that energy. You know? I was a person that's looking for more positive people that wanted a certain type of future. That's coming from Jamaica and this, the lack of opportunities and coming somewhere where you have even more opportunities, it makes someone like myself hunger for that opportunity. Mm -hmm. So, that, so, I, so once, once I started testing, I, the score I got, got me a position equivalent to what I was doing, which uh, the position was aircraft maintenance, which had certain aspects of electrical and electronic system in it. Uh, so that's been my life until still to this day. I'm just, you know, that's, I'm a, what you call a, an electronic technician, more so in computer technology than anything else. 
But uh, that was a beautiful four and a half years of this experience. I uh, learned a whole lot. Got some college money to go to Embry Riddle and also before that to finish up my technical certifications. Mm -hmm. So all of that put me into a position where I would end up here in Georgia in 2001, um, outside of the Atlanta area. And within about two years of just being, you know, working and being in an environment, was, you know, I met some incredible people that were into African roots and culture. And uh, one of my uh, good brothers uh, that I work with, um, I have a lot of connections with books and DVDs and videotapes. And literally, you know, information that opened, you know, opened my mind up. So once I started joining these study groups and started building that interest, it didn't take me long uh, from, you know, you know, from a time frame of like 2000, 2002 or really like 2003. You know, next thing you know, by 2004, I was traveling to countries like uh, Egypt and Senegal, which birthed the world of my travel experience, 2004 to now it's 2015. Um, literally March will make uh, 15 straight years that I've been traveling to the African continent. And that's where we end up in a situation now where after going to in a few more countries in 2005, uh, South Africa, Kenya, and also uh, Senegal again. And then the following year, 2006, going to the Gambia, which is a country that reminds me of Jamaica and this motivating me more to want to know more about Africa. Then finally being introduced to Ghana as a sixth country that I've, you know, at that time and being the country that I was looking for, because Ghana has a combination of it all. It has you know, the roots of culture, business, investment, nightlife, shopping, networking, all the things that I feel like I could build a program with. So that's when I literally got into business, October 2006, and did our first journey December 2006. Mm -hmm. And from there on, this yeah. And I want to ask really quickly because, so you say that you were introduced to teachings and ideologies that helped kind of pave your way down this new line of thinking. I'm wondering what about those teachings spoke to you? I, I feel like Marcus Garvey spoke to me in a, in, a, in a dream. I felt like our ancestors, once I went to Senegal, I went to Gori Island, to the African Holocaust dungeons, and went to uh, Cape Coast and Elmina and Ghana and experienced that. And those three experiences right there, it just, you know, it just spoke to you in a dream that, you know, we need to come back and return to the land of our ancestors for the purpose of nation building, come back and build what we need to build for ourselves. We have built what we had to build as stolen Africans for our enemies and our oppressors. You know? So now let's build that spirit. So it's something that I, you know, I never thought that everybody would feel once we started doing the tours and everything. Um, and I started pushing certain things and started just getting on radio interviews and just trying to push the energy. But the good thing about it, um, you know, I was able to develop two back-to-back -back wonderful tours, October 2007, which was 42 of us, and October 2008, uh, which was uh, 33 of us. And those are still the two, you know, two of the, um, the top tours that we've done over the years as far as uh, group size uh, and energy. Um, uh, but, you know, building that program, in that program was always one of those things that we talk about, living sustainably an African continent, being able to live off the land and be as sustainable as possible and get away from a dependent society. Uh, and how, did, how did people find um, your tours? How are you reaching out to people and marketing your services? You, you said, how, how, how do I do it? Uh, how, yeah, do, how are you marketing your services, Sorry, the train? Uh, just a combination of different things uh, from combination of word of mouth to combination of this, uh, having the information on the website and having the web links uh, posted all over YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, having mm -hmm. lots of postcards sent out. I have people from different parts of the states that you know, they put the postcards in Pan-African bookstores, restaurants, I have books that we sell here, investment guides, uh, that when people order it, I put postcards in there. Um, and just you know, from, and then ultimately, just a lot of video presentation and do things locally and you know, things just get around over a period of time. And it's been a good, consistent uh, 12 straight years. So information gets out after a while. Wow. So 12 straight years. So um, this will be my final question and then we can move on to another section. But um, through these tours, what, are, what do you find people looking for when they're on these tours? Like what are what are they going on them for? 
Yeah, most people, what they're looking for is they're looking to reconnect an ancestral land and they're looking to get clarity whether, you know, uh, you know, whether Ghana is a country that they can live, do business, they can raise a family. They, they hear so much from their peers, but also they hear so much negative stuff from the documentation of just um, uh, TV and what was shared in the school system. Uh, so the tour gave people maximum amount of clarity to move forward, to be able to see things and be able to also just compare it to their current life. So it, 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 for the most part, it gives clarity, but also it gives you a sense of this connection as far as linking and networking. And then the adventure as far as the nightlife and certain activities that we do, it gives a sense of just being able to get away and being connected with your own brothers and sisters. Okay. Perfect. All right, perfect family. So uh, we're going to reconnect and uh, we're going to link you with another session as me, Bomani Tamba, link with uh, Brianna and we share some incredible connection to you about uh, Africa, Ghana, and uh, nation building. <laughs>